In this video, we're going to look at global tracks in Logic. I've mentioned global tracks a couple of times already. This is where we can import the movie, where we can add our markers, and where we can add markers from the movie as well. So it's this little down arrow here, or you can push G as a shortcut. And you'll see within our global tracks, we have arrangement, marker, movie, signature, and tempo. If you right click in this section, you also get a couple of other options that you can turn on, such as your transposition and your beat mapping. These are all the things that are available in our global tracks. Most of these can be accessed other ways as well, such as through your list editor, where you can get to the tempo and marker and signature. Some things are exclusively in global tracks as well, like your beat mapping and transposition section. Let's go through each of these and see what they actually do. The arrangement is all about the actual arrangement. For example, if you're writing a song, you would click on the plus and you'd create an intro and say you want your intro to be 16 bars. Then you could add another one, which would be your verse, chorus, etc. And you can change these as to which section they are or rename them entirely. Pretty useful to help you sketch out the idea for a track. Next up is our markers, which we went through earlier on. So you have different sets of markers and within each set, you can have different groupings of markers on there, such as your start of movie, uh, sorry, your scene cuts from the movie if you've imported those, or your own music themes markers that you've created yourself as well. And you can color those as we looked at in a previous session. Below that's your movie. This is where you can open your movie or remove it. You can create your marker sets from here. You can access your project settings and your synchronization settings if you want to offset the first bar of where the, where the bar starts in the movie as well. Next up, you have your signature sets. This is to do with your time signature, which we'll look at a little bit later, but this can be really helpful to just quickly mark in where you want your time signature to, to change. So on bar nine, we want it to turn into six, eight. And we click okay, and you can see this changes to six, eight there. Again, this is accessible through our list editor as well, our signature up here, but it's a bit, can be a bit quicker if you have your global tracks open to just quickly pop them in up there as well. The next one's an interesting one, which is transpose. You can again have sets of transpositions, but if you had one repeating pattern that you, that you wanted to change key, you can actually use your transpose up here to just click in where you want that to change to. It moves up by semitones. You can go up, up to an octave or down by an octave as well and anything in between. The next one's really interesting, which is your tempo. Now, again, you have tempo set, so you can set different sets of tempo and snap. Snap is really great because you can automatically make the tempo always stick to a certain place. So if you always wanted the tempo to change on a quarter note beat, you can select the quarter note snap. No matter where you click, it will always line up with a quarter note. As you can see, that's the 16.5. We're in 6.8, so it's gone a bit weird. But you can see if we go to the earlier section, it's always on a quarter note, nothing in between. And what's really good with the global tracks uh, tempo editor is if you put two different tempos in, you move up to, say we want this to change from 132 up to 150, you'll notice I put an extra dot. To make a dot, you just click and it adds a dot. You can set curves with this little um, black dot as well. So if my first dot is right at bar one and my second dot is on bar uh, seven, the tempo curve will move anywhere between those bars. You can move that curve around. Of course, if I added another dot closer to it, then it would link, it would always be between that dot instead. And what the curve does, it allows you to have a, a an increase in tempo or a decrease in tempo rather than a sudden tempo change. So if you want something to gradually slow down, you can add a curve in and then it will gradually slow down rather than suddenly slowing down. The only problem with movie music is it can make lining up that hit point difficult because you'll see if I wanted this bar to land exactly on this frame where she's picking up the blue ball, if I had a tempo curve here, it can sometimes move things ever so slightly depending on how far you, you curve it around. So when you really want to be exact with your timings, tempo curves can make it a little tricky to do that. You can add curves the old fashioned way as well by going into your list editor, tempo, and then in options, choosing tempo operations. And you can do these, uh, create a tempo curve or constant scale. You can do all these, all these crazy things with a tempo where, for example, you say between bar one and bar five, I want the tempo to go from 132 up to 150. Ooh, not 450, 
152. You can choose whether you want it to be a, a, a smooth curve or a quicker curve or an arced curve. And so it goes up and down. And then you choose how often you want that tempo to change. So density, that's one tempo change per bar. If you want it to be really smooth, you can go all the way up to one 30 second note and you have a really smooth tempo curve. As default, it, it would go back to, to 132, but if you particularly continue with new tempo, it will carry on at 152. Apply and you can see it's added all those tempo transitions in. And all of the tempo things in here, minute changes, it's crazy. So really that's a bit of an old fashioned way of doing it now that they add, now that they introduced the tempo curve, which is a much more intuitive way of, of adding those curves in instead. And you don't have millions of things in your, in your operations. Finally, in our global tracks, we have beat mapping. Now beat mapping is where you can automatically match the tempo of logic to a file that you have, that you've dragged in. This is, again, isn't very useful for movie music because generally we're deciding the tempos because we have to be really specific with a visual but for tidying up parts or something, it can be it can be useful to use. I'm not going to go into detail on, on beat mapping because really that's not relevant to what, what we'll be using Logic for. So those are your global tracks. I'd always recommend choosing which ones you'll actually use and, and hiding all the others because if not, there's just too much information to look at. So you just right click. You can either tick them off here or if you click Configure Global Tracks or Alt-G, you can change take off the ones that you won't use. So I never use arrangements. I'll turn that off. I'll keep the signature there so that I can see it at a glance. I'm never going to use a transposition because I do that all manually. Tempo is handy to see at a, at a glance and beat mapping we don't need either. And then that's all, that's all we need. We have a nice clear global tracks up here, which I can quickly open or close by using the G key on the keyboard.